Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey, I'm Diana. You're watching Physics Girl Riddle Series. Here's where we left off in the last video. Michael Stevens from Vsauce is in the hot seat answering a buoyancy riddle, which I know that you already attempted to answer in the comments of the last video. I laid out the premise of that riddle for him after giving him a warm-up riddle, which you should go try if you missed it. And in case you did miss it, here again is the main riddle. I've got a glass of water, and um, over here, imagine that you have an ice cube and inside the ice cube, it looks normal because it looks like everything is clear, mm -hmm. but inside of it, it's got a little diamond frozen mm -hmm. in the middle. Hmm. Got it? Great, beautiful. Yeah. And then you drop the ice cube into the glass of water. Now, when the ice cube melts and the diamond falls to the bottom of the glass, mm -hmm. because carbon in diamond form is uh, more dense than water, mm -hmm. does the water level go down, go up, or stay the same from the level it was at when the ice cube is first placed in there? Very good question. All right, so let's work through this. So, okay. wait, I just, I, I kind of want to know your intuition for it. Uh, well, the water is level. Is that not fair? Th that's what we're working through right now, I, I think. know, I know, but intuition is like snap judgment. Oh, oh, my snap judgment yeah. answer? My, my intuition is that the water level will not be as high. Okay. But that intuition comes from a video that you made. I know. <laughs> about when you exaggerate things in a problem, it can become more clear. Okay, go ahead. You were like, imagine that you had like a rock on a boat. Yeah. And the rock was really heavy. Yeah. So the boat was pushed down a lot, but yep. it still wasn't sinking. Mm -hmm. Then you throw the rock overboard and it falls into the water. It still has the same mass, but now rather than displacing a huge amount of water because of the boat, yeah. it's only displacing its volume, which right. we're imagining is very small. It's mm -hmm. like a black hole rock. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking. I think that is what I said. I think I said black hole rock. A bl is that really? It's like you watched my what? video, Michael. <laughs> Number one fan of physics, girl. So look, well, but the problem is that the cube becomes part of the water. Exactly. So you, the ice cube is melting as well. Right. So you feel like if the cube is like half floating, like half of it's above and half is below. Yeah. Then you have a condition where you're only displacing half of the volume of the cube. But then when the ice cube melts, all of it, the water that was the ice cube has been added to the glass. Yeah. So the level should be higher when the ice cube melts. Is this talking about like if there were no diamond in, diamond it? in it? That's what I'm wondering. Well, this, because this is the age old question of what happens when there's a glacier with water melting into the ocean mm -hmm. versus an iceberg where the water is melting. Right, yeah. right, right. Oh, I see, I see. The ice is melting. Yeah. yeah, the reason the ice cube floats is that it is displacing its own weight in water, not just the volume. In fact, that's what determines how deeply it's going to be submerged. Exactly. It's uh -huh. displaced its own weight in water, which means after it melts, its own weight of water will be in there. So I guess it stays the same. Yeah. But now we have this diamond Good to job. in. Thank you. Yeah. But now we have this diamond to worry about. Exactly. The diamond is going to displace its volume in water because it's sinking. Mm-hmm. Whereas when it was floating, it was displacing its weight in water. Mm-hmm. So the water level will go down. Mm-hmm. Is that the right answer? That is the right answer. That is really cool. Yay, Michael! Answer. So much depends on knowing what it means to float. Yes, right? exactly. Knowing what Archimedes' principle means. Michael was basically reiterating Archimedes' principle when he reasoned through why the ice cube floats even before it melts. You're, the reason the ice cube floats is that it is displacing its own weight in water, not just the volume. Yes, that's because here's Archimedes' principle, which I will try to show visually to help it be clearer than just the normal way it's usually written out. So. The buoyant force, which is the force pushing up on an object floating in water, is equal to the weight of the water displaced by the object. Meaning that if you took that space filled up by the ice rather than the water, and then filled it with water and weighed that water, then that weight, which is actually a force, would be equal to the buoyant force. That is Archimedes' principle. Thanks, Archimedes! Knowing also a little bit about what happens with water when it melts, like the fact that right. ice is this really, really weird solid substance that becomes yeah. more dense. I think there are a few other things that freeze into a less dense substance. Yeah. 
But Not the, many. And because the water is initially supporting all of the weight of the diamond encased in the ice, and then only the weight of the water displaced by the diamond, which is much less than the level, will go down. This is a lot like the riddle that I did with the boat and the rock, except that the boat doesn't melt in that case. If you like these types of riddles, I did a really fun video, I had fun, with Simone Yetch, my good friend, where there were two spheres that are identical in size, and then I asked about the force on them, when the air resistance, when they're falling, and stuff like that. Check that one out. And I promised you a bonus puzzle, so here it is. Is it possible to tell which stars in the sky are the hottest just by looking at them, with or without an instrument that shows you the star's spectrum? How? I'll pin a comment with the answer to the top of the comment section a day after this video goes up. And thanks so much to Michael Stevens. Yeah, he did good. You never know. Sometimes people trip up even when they've got that solid physics knowledge. But this was fun. Thanks, Michael. Check out the video I did with him on the Dong channel where we did magic tricks with cards and stuff and math. Michael's math magic. Mm. <laughs> thanks so much for watching, you guys. And happy, happy physicsing. Hey. I'd like to thank Curiosity Stream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers, including Curiosity Stream originals. For example, you could check out Exploring Quantum History, hosted by Brian Greene, all about the history of quantum physics and where we stand with quantum today. To learn more about Curiosity Stream, you could go to curiositystream.com slash physicsgirl and use promo code physicsgirl during the signup process. Thank you.